aging. We have two main types of aging with, with the first one really being more the intrinsic, internal, biological aging that you inherited, all right? And the extrinsic ex being the external aging that is due to environmental factors. Had you spoken to a doctor 20 years ago, he said, oh, it has nothing to do with skincare, it has nothing to do with, with, you know, much of anything other than genetics. We now know that the sun will age your skin more than anything else. The number one skin ager is, is, is obviously sun exposure or UVR exposure, ultraviolet rays exposure. And then internally smoking is the second worst thing you can do with your skin, not to mention that the third is probably excessive weight gain and weight loss. But again, intrinsic aging is internal and occurs naturally with the passage of time. We might call this chronological type aging. But extrinsic aging is the one that we could have prevented, all right? And this is the one where you have to go, oh, now I'm having to, get, I'm having to have all those peels to make up for all the tanning I did, all right? Or be on terosinase inhibitors so that that pigment never really comes up that you saw under the wood lab or you will see under the wood lab today. So <laughs> intrinsic versus extrinsic aging. Um, and you can tell what people take care of. Look at my hands. When people look at my hands, they know I take care of my hands. I'm, you know, going to be 35 next year. And if you look at the color of my, my hands versus my face, what do you see? They are very white, my hands, very pale. But I take care of them. I take care of my hands. And I'm, I'm not in the sun like I used to. So you can tell what people take care of. And it's interesting. That as an esthetician, I really do want you to start, especially with some of the gel peels that we're going to be doing, is I want you to extend them out into the next chest if they're allowed to be put on the neck and chest because I've seen women that have beautiful skin from the mandible up and then you get to the neck and you're like, now we can tell your age. <coughs> we can't laser your neck or chest, okay? <laughs> we can't. Too close to your heart. If the skin is too sensitive, we would just put you in grave danger, all right? So extrinsic aging is going to be sun exposure, pollution, and other types of damage. It is the whole free radical theory of, thank you so much, the whole free radical theory of aging that's so um, important, right? Free radicals are uh, uh, attacking your skin cells every day. They're mad at you if you have vitamin C because it's a much harder thing to do when you have vitamin C because vitamin C is an antioxidant. Vitamin E is an antioxidant. Vitamin A is an antioxidant. So when you wear antioxidants on your skin, not only... Do they help your sunscreen work better? But, but, um, they really fight off those free radical scavengers that are trying to um, eat away at that healthy stratum corneum that you may have. Okay? So it is that free radical theory of aging that's um, so important. Exposure. Exposure. You stay away from the sun, you're going to be gorgeous 20, 30 years from now. You didn't stay away from the sun, you're going to have to be getting procedures. So really, if you raise your, your children correctly, keep them away from the sun, they may not have to get the things that we, not to mention diet, can do so much. All right, the skin on our faces ages faster than the skin on the rest of our bodies due to extrinsic aging. And often with people who like to be in the sun, you're going to see a lot of damage in the forehead, tip of the nose, and then of course, chest. All right, what, where, where are we tallest? Where are we highest? That point of your nose is pretty high. You, when your face gets sunburned, that's, that nose is always involved high because it's high up there. All right, free radicals have been cited as one of the major causes of extrinsic aging. All right, but what can we do topically to combat aging? Well, there's vitamin C, and we've are, talked about this before. There's ascorbic or l ascorbic acid, the stingy type vitamin C for sudden damaged skin, phototraumatized skin. There's magnesium excorbyl phosphate or an ester form of C that's a little bit more tolerable for more sensitive skin types. <laughs> There's <coughs> alpha lipoic acid that helps your uh, cells process sugar. But topically, it's a, it's a good external plumper. So we love alpha lipoic acid. And if you start taking it, you will see changes. Usually within three months, you'll see some pretty amazing changes in your skin if you start taking off the lipoic internally at a good 50 to 100 milligrams a day, 
Right. If you took 100, would you take 50 or 50, or can you just take 100? Either or, yeah. It's going to be, you're going to take 250 or one that's already 100. Okay. Yeah. So alpha lipoic acid is not only a, a good um, internal supplement to take, but it's now um, in good, plumpy, creamy um, creams. I know you've also heard of DMAE, um, and that's another um, component in skin that has a tightening effect. <coughs> Just you have to be patient with alpha lipoic acid topically. I don't want you to think of acid like an alpha hydroxy acid. All right, ALA is is is. is Again, it's not like an alpha hydroxy. There is no irritation with alpha lipoic acid. All right, hyaluronic acid, that's HA, that's a glycosaminoglycan, and we're actually using it for our filler injections now in the face. Um, not to mention that we love it in skincare because it's just water binding, it's beautiful, it feels like you're just putting beautiful water on your face and leaving it there. Okay, that's hyaluronic acid. It's a glycosaminoglycan, a gag. And then, obviously, the most powerful ingredients within a trained esthetician are going to be AHAs, alpha hydroxies, all right? Alpha and beta hydroxy acids. This, these are the things, or these are the agents that are going to allow you to actually do anti-aging type work, not to mention the work on acne as well. Vitamin C is highly important. Vitamin C ester, for example, or ascorbyl palmitate is composed of L-ascorbic acid, which is basic vitamin C, with a fatty acid as well, uh, palmitic acid derived from palm oil. The two components are joined by an ester bond. So now we're getting that stingy C that may not be tolerated by certain skin types, adding a creamier, oilier base and making it more tolerable so it can stay on the skin longer. Does that make sense? All right, vitamin C is essential for collagen production and heals inflammation. Vitamin C ester is fat soluble. It can penetrate cell membranes because of that, allowing the antioxidant to protect the cell where free radicals do the most damage. Again, vitamin C does some of its best work on photo damaged skin. In other words, sun damaged skin is going to look like vitamin C. A young, youthful client who's a Glock Gal 1 in her 30s, does not need vitamin C. But a Glock Gal 3 and 4 absolutely needs to be using vitamin C. Vitamin C's are great. Vitamin C topicals are great to be used in the daytime when alpha hydroxys are used at night. Let me tell you, those older women in their 50s and 60s love their skin suitable vitamin C serums. <laughs> they really do. All right, not to mention that vitamin C is a great pre precursor for sunscreen. It makes your sunscreen work better, okay?